Hey friends, welcome or welcome back to my channel. This is Sandra and today's video is going to be one of the most long-awaited videos on my channel so far. And sorry about my voice, I am coming off of a bit of a cold. But yeah, today's video is going to be all about how I got a six-figure job out of college in cybersecurity. So first, I did want to start off with the fact that I am very lucky. So even before I started my current role, which is my second ever job out of college in cybersecurity, my first job, I was already making low six figures. And growing up, my parents always made way below the average median US household income. So yes, I was very, very lucky to be able to make that much with just my bachelor's degree. And for anyone wondering, I graduated with a bachelor's degree in information science and technology from Temple University, which is a pretty standard average state school i would say it's definitely not you know a harvard or a berkeley okay so that was a huge ramble but i'm just going to go over all the things that i think went into helping me get a six-figure job out of college especially in cybersecurity, where a lot of starting salaries seem to hover around the 50 or 60 or 70 thousand dollar range so yeah let's get into it okay the first thing i want to point out here is that even though i worked really really hard for this and i do think i worked hard in school in previous internships and everything like that i also think a huge part of it is also just luck that's the thing that i can't really pinpoint as much because because it's really about being in the right place at the right time meeting the right recruiter being interviewed by the right interviewer maybe having your background really resonate with someone that you talk to at a specific company that they're willing to give you a chance all of these things they're hard to measure and and even though i had a decent gpa a decent GPA doesn't equate to a high starting salary. Okay, so for those of you who don't know how I got my first cybersecurity job out of college, it was my senior year and every fall there is a conference that I go to or I have been going to and that is the Grace Hopper Conference and it's basically a women in tech conference but any conference will probably give you similar results. But essentially it's like a big career fair and there's a bunch of companies there and I just went up and talked to a bunch of different ones. It was a three-day conference and on the last day I ended up going to a booth which happened to be my future employee Employer, and I kind of treated it like a normal career fair. You go up, talk to someone, show them your resume, you talk a little bit about yourself, and they just pass me on to someone else. And this other person just happened to be a fairly senior person in my in the cybersecurity organization of that company. And even though I barely had any cybersecurity experience on my resume, I did have a certification in computer security and digital forensics from my university that wasn't, you know, nationally affiliated. It was just something my school offered, so I did it by taking a few extra cybersecurity classes. And then from there, I also talked about my software engineering experience at JP Morgan and it just so happened that I was working in the risk team in JP and we basically built an application that provided a platform for people to be able to obtain certain confidential information and even though that wasn't specifically cybersecurity related I was able to talk about it and it really resonated with this person and believed that I was a good fit for their team and after that I got an offer which was already in the very very low uh six figure range and i negotiated and got a little bit of a bump and then i accepted my offer so that was the entire process of my hiring journey so you can imagine all the factors that could have been different if this person wasn't at the booth when i went if i went on a thursday instead of that friday if that first person didn't initially like my resume and didn't point me towards that person they could have just looked at my resume and said no you're not a good fit and i would have walked away you know all these things are really luck based i think and it really comes back to the quote of luck is the intersection of hard work and opportunity so i definitely have been putting in the work the last three or four years in college but the opportunity is what i needed and this just happened to be the opportunity that i needed to boost my career and start my journey in cybersecurity because besides that i was full-on just a software engineer i did not really have much experience in cybersecurity at all so this person really had to take a chance on me and honestly it really comes down to people trusting you and to people seeing something in you that maybe you don't see yet because if you think about it when i was graduating college i was only applying to software engineering roles there's no way i would have applied for a cybersecurity role but because i went to this conference this person just happened to be in the cybersecurity organization and like my resume he also happened to come from a software engineering background and then got into cybersecurity and those coincidences really just happened by pure luck so with this long story i guess what i'm trying to say is put yourself out there to as many touch points as you can to be able to meet different people not just through a career website portal while i do think that submitting your resume to different databases and and applying to different jobs online and talking to people on linkedin are great valid ways to find jobs there are still other avenues out there like going to career fairs, going to conferences, going to meetups, getting a person one-on-one -on -one in front of you and having them talk to you about your background can dig up so much more than what your resume is telling about yourself. For example, someone could have looked at my resume, saw that I was applying to a software engineering role, which I actually told the person I was looking for software engineering roles, and they were the one who mentioned that 
hey, you might be good for cybersecurity. Have you ever considered it? And I was like, no, never. <laughs> and it just so happened to go from there. So honestly, it's all about setting up as many touch points as you can with networking opportunities and, and opportunities to talk to people and meet people and then leveraging those to then meet other people and opening up all the doors and ways that you can get new jobs or new experiences or a new role that you may not even have heard of in technology or any other field that you want to go into and who knows it may end up being your dream job or that passion that you really enjoy i'm also having 20 percent off all my cybersecurity career resources from june 1st to 15th linked in the description below so yeah, I really do think it's all about putting yourself in those situations where you're able to potentially bump shoulders or meet people who may be able to get you that new job. Right, the next tip I have for you guys is to put the right things on your resume for the job that you're applying for. And you don't have to mold your resume for every single job that you apply to, but I do think it's important to know what you're up against when you're applying to these jobs, especially if you are doing it through an online portal. For example, you may be applying to 50, 100 jobs at a time, but if you can make a list of the top 5 to 10 companies that you really want to work for, find the cybersecurity roles or whatever roles that you're most interested in and then taking a look at what they list as their requirements preferred or required and then really just taking 10 to 20 minutes to learn each topic if it's a specific tool if they're using burp suite or metasploit then going on youtube and watching a 20 to 30 minute tutorial to be able to at least know what it is and a lot of these are open source or have a free community edition so you can download it and, and play with it in a lab or in your own virtual box these are all ways to get that hands-on experience that you can use to talk about experiences and, and because this video is specifically for entry-level roles they're not going to expect you to be you know whizzes at everything they're going to expect you to be able to know certain things and then plug in the holes as you learn so as long as you're able to give them the idea that hey i'm willing to learn and i've looked into this but even though i'm not a pro at it i can get good and once you feel fairly comfortable even as a beginner you can put those on your resume and hopefully those keywords can get your resume passed through to a recruiter and then that can really help get your foot in the door because the recruiter sees that your skills on your resume match the job description and that is what they're going to pass on to the hiring manager and sorry for the change of light it is kind of cloudy outside and because you have the right skill on your resume for this job it's more likely that the company is willing to give you a higher salary because they would rather have you over someone who does not have those skills on their resume and it also makes you just a more competitive candidate okay the next thing i want to talk about is negotiating and this is something that i have only recently gotten more experience doing but it is such a valuable skill to have because if you get an offer from a company that is not their highest offer that is their first offer and they usually expect you to negotiate and it definitely will be easier to negotiate for you if you already have another offer you can use or some other option that you're thinking of for example like grad school if you're deciding between going into grad school versus versus going into a full-time job basically more options means you have more leverage to be able to negotiate for a higher salary and typically you don't want to be the first one to give a number out during a salary negotiation because obviously you don't want to lowball yourself even with all the research that you're doing on Glassdoor those numbers may not be accurate for the role that I was in I believe the average salary online stated that it was 70 or $80,000 a year but that was significantly lower than the first offer that I got for this job so that's definitely something to keep in mind and it's usually preferred that the recruiter gives you the number first and from there you can start negotiating based on all the factors that you're considering because companies want good cybersecurity professionals they want to be able to hire the best candidate that they can because it costs a lot of money to hire people honestly it costs companies tens of thousands of dollars to fill in a role I believe there's some statistic out there that says that it costs like some $30,000 to hire someone to backfill a role. All of that costs a lot of money. And if they found you as a candidate that they really want to hire, then they're usually going to be okay with negotiating with you. Unless it's for a new grad program that is that is just super, super rigid, which some companies do have, and they just say, no negotiations, this is the only offer. It's really hard to say unless you're talking to your future manager or your future team. But while you're negotiating, you can bring up any offers that you may have. And if you don't have any, you can bring up any companies or roles that you're currently applying to or interviewing with and it will make your decision a lot easier to make if you're able to negotiate the salary offer and usually companies want to get you to sign your offer as soon as possible and then of course all the nice skills that you have on your resume all of your experiences your education your background so many of these things you may think may just be typical or standard but if you got to the offer stage of a company's interview process then you know you're their best candidate probably out of hundreds thousands of candidates so sell yourself pretty high and and just treat it as if you're selling yourself like a commodity in this negotiation process and i actually listened to a podcast a few months ago interviewing mel robbins which is an author of the five second rule and a bunch of other self-help books and she basically started doing this thing where someone will give her a rate and she would say i charge double 
And I'm not saying to use this in your negotiation. I'm not saying to ask them to double your salary, but it's something to keep in mind to have the audacity to negotiate and stand up for yourself to get the salary that you deserve. Even if you don't think you deserve it yet. That's an important key here too. And I know it's not typical to start out with six figures out of college. I hope I'm not being unreasonable here. I did not go to a fan company. I worked at a fintech company, which was a financial services company. So if that gives you guys any insight into my role, and most people I knew coming out of college or making the 50 to $70,000 range, especially if you're not in a high cost of living city. And this brings me to the final thing of this list, which is the fact that I would be in a high cost of living city. So I was actually in a role where I was switching between New York City and Jersey City, but my official seat was in Jersey City. So even though it was outside of New York, I was still making a very good salary even though my rent was crazy expensive. If you guys didn't know, my rent was $3,000 a month for a one bedroom apartment. So honestly, six figures sounds like a lot of money until you get the rent and you get the cost of food and living in the city. Honestly, it's not as much as you would think when you were a kid, even though it's still a lot of money. But one piece of advice that I got from, from one of my previous mentors at JP Morgan was the fact that your starting salary is one of the most important things out of boot camp or out of college, because this is a salary that really propels you in your career. And it also ends up being kind of like the baseline of what salaries you ask for and negotiate for in the future. For example, if you start at 70K and then your next job a few years later, you'll probably ask for 85K or some equivalent that isn't too crazy of a number because you're basing it off of your previous experience. Not a lot of people are going to jump from 70K and then say, hey, I want 100K in this next job. And that's really more of a psychological thing. But the advice that my mentor gave me was the fact that if you start out in a higher cost of living city, then even when you go back to a lower or a medium cost of living city, you're still going to be able to negotiate at the higher range because you already have that standard and companies are going to be willing to pay you more, even if you're going to be getting paid more than their current local employees. Employees, which honestly is crazy, especially for backwards salary compatibility. It is not there in most companies and also a problem that I hope companies work to fix to keep their employees. And that's something I've seen firsthand being paid more than other coworkers or teammates that have been in my company for much, much longer than me. So hopefully there is going to be some policy in the future that has some kind of backwards salary increase because without it, companies are only gonna increase your salary by one to 2% a year, even though inflation is like six, 7%. So that's why you should always fight for a higher salary knowing that your salary increases are probably not going to be significant unless you get a promotion, which isn't going to be every single year. So being open to relocating to a higher cost of living city, New York or the Bay Area or some city in California or even cities like Seattle are going to be great options for you because if you just do that for two to three years and then you decide you want to go back to your hometown if you want to, the companies in your hometown are going to pay you bigger bucks than they would have originally paid you if you applied to those roles in the first place. And coming back, you'll probably already be making more than, than the employees that are working locally in a lower cost of living city. Okay, so one last thing I want to throw in here is the fact that even though you may see everyone around you getting paid similar salaries that are in the $60,000 range or wherever it may fluctuate for the cost of living or whatever city that you're in, at least where I'm from in Philadelphia, which is kind of like a second tier city, um, most salaries were around 50,000 to around 70,000. And that was all I had ever expected to make. Um, that is something I want you guys to keep in mind because at JP Morgan, I have already disclosed my salary before on this channel, but during my internship, I was making around the equivalent of $72,000 per year, which is a lot of money, it is already above the US median household income, and I was already ecstatic about that. That is double what my parents had been making my entire life with both of them combined. So, you know, I was already very happy with my salary, and, and I was always the type to be scared to get too greedy and have opportunities slip away or have people think poorly of me or, or just think negatively of me, but it really is about setting yourself up for your future self for your future family, for your future house, future life you wanna live. You can't be afraid to negotiate for a higher salary. Let's face it, we live in a society that needs financial stability. And you're gonna especially thank yourself for giving a damn about this as a fresh college or bootcamp grad. And the person who really helped me with this was actually Luca on this channel, if you guys know him. He is a software engineer that I feature commonly on this channel. And he was the one who really pushed me to negotiate. I was already happy with my initial six-figure offer for this company. I had never expected it in the first place. And he was really the one who really pushed me and inspired me to 
ask for more it was never something i expected before but with him being a software engineer at a big tech company or a fan company it really set the bar higher for me because i knew oh coming out of college people are making this salary at fan companies so why couldn't someone at a typical company also make something at least close to whatever fan companies are making and that was just a thought i had in the back of my mind and because i was comparing myself to the upper which at the time to me was luca as that higher standard which you always want a higher standard in your life someone that you can look up to and think wow could i get there or how can i get there not just like oh well everyone else is making this much so i should be happy with it okay so hopefully this video didn't make you guys think that i just tell you guys to ask for as much money as possible but companies are making billions and billions of dollars in revenue a year it's not gonna hurt them to pay you 10 extra thousand dollars and even if you don't get a six-figure salary it doesn't really matter it's really just an arbitrary number or milestone that people talk about a lot as long as you're able to get a salary that you believe is worth your time your skills your knowledge your experience all the time and effort that you're gonna put into this future job then that is what's worth it all right so this was a huge ramble i am sorry for making you guys sick of hearing me and my voice is very like raspy right now so apologies kind of late that you guys have to sit through this yeah i will let you guys go thank you guys so much for watching let me know in the comments below if you have any questions and by the way the discord channel is live and if you have a discord and want to join in on the fun and join the community feel free to join in the link in my description and i love you guys so so much thank you guys again for watching if you like this video please give a thumbs up and subscribe and turn on post notifications i post videos every wednesdays and sundays at 12 p.m and by the way i do plan on making a course on getting your first cybersecurity job out of college or out of a boot camp or doing a career switch and coming into cybersecurity and that is in the brainstorming phase hopefully to be released at the end of this year yeah let me know in the comments below if you guys have anything you want me to add into the course and of course any video topics you would want to see from me in the future all right thank you guys again for watching and hopefully i'll see you guys in my next video bye